and can be a good source of early power. Oh, guys, this is absolutely amazing. I'm the YouTube, I'm the Toffman, and welcome back to some more Not The Bees. It is part six today, guys. And believe it or not, I've still not put an episode out publicly on YouTube as of yet. However, the first episode has just gone live on Patreon. If you're not a Patreon follower, guys, from $1 per month, you can become a Patreon and you will get access to my videos one week earlier than what you do on uh, YouTube by itself. So please do keep that in mind and uh, also keep in mind it does help massively uh, when it comes to carrying on with content with my channel. So I'm really, really enjoying this pack, guys, and I cannot wait to get back into this. This is the um, what I would like to call the second, in inverted commas, uh, loads of uh, recordings that I'm sitting down to go ahead and do. Now, in between the second lot of recordings, of course, these episodes will be going out publicly on YouTube. Um, so I will be getting your suggestions and your comments, and please do keep uh, in mind I am way ahead of myself, obviously, when it comes to recordings. So any suggestions that you do, I will be going ahead and uh, and keeping them written down so that I can use them if of course they uh, they still uh, apply later on in this series so please do keep that in mind you will know that I've read your comment when I go ahead and click the little heart button so a little icon comes up saying that I love your comment which basically means I've read it. Um, I don't have time, obviously, to be able to uh, reply to everybody's comments and um, please do keep that in mind also. However, let's get straight into this episode, guys. I want to show you what I've been working on in between episodes. There is a little bit that sprouted up along the back here. What is this place that sprouted up at the back here, I hear you ask? Well, guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, this little piece, this little piece that sprouted up is... Um, uh, the uh, the fruits of my hard work. So, over there, in between episodes, I've just been doing some bees, guys. I've been going ahead, breeding these bees, getting these bees pure, and uh, and then sticking them in their own apiaries on the backside here. We've got the husbandry bees, which is actually part of uh, a quest that I've done. I've got one of the smelter bees, which are awesome. We're going to be working on them today. I've got yente bees. I've got still got the obsidian bees, which unfortunately don't work because it's too cold and there's no flowers for the obsidian bees to do anything with. Uh, we've got the PhD bees, which are awesome as well. They will be used uh, for going on for further on down the line. But... There is a line of bees that I discovered, guys, in between episodes that I really need to get into. As I discussed last episode, power is going to be a problem for us going down the line. That is why I'm going down this engineer's route. So we've got the engineer bees, which are here, and we've got the clockwork bees. Now, the clockwork bees, I'm actually going to breed it with that one. Uh, the clockwork bees are really, really good, guys. And I will show you that when I give in the quest. These are our pures. Let's put that there. Interestingly as well, you can see the amount of species we've got. We certainly haven't got 1,606 drones in there, guys. I can tell you that. Um, we've got 31 species of 343. And it would be a nice little end to the series if we can get all, every single one of these species. I know that it's not possible, though, because there's some uh, particular drones and, and bees that you can only get at particular points during the year. And this is not going to be a series that's going to last a full-on year, guys. So, yeah, that's not going to be possible. It's a shame, but it's not going to be possible. So, let's have a look in the quest book, then, and see what we can hand in now that we've done that. We've done this one entirely now, which is fantastic. The career bees, however, we've not managed to do. Um, this one... Husbandry bees are really useful at automating the breeding of animals. They will automatically breed any animal in their territory for you. This is useful when combined with a butcher bee, as it will automatically keep any adult animal in range, but will always leave two animals remaining. That is pretty awesome, guys. Uh, we will certainly be using the husbandry bees, and we'll certainly be using the butcher bee as well later on down the line. However... We've got a problem with that one, and we need dirt. We need a lot more dirt than what we currently have. We need a lot more dirt than we're currently producing from our dirty bee as well. So it's a shame, but it's just one thing we're going to have to deal with. Breed up one for now, and then use it to collect some extra meat and leather for some, some, uh, for some rewards. 
So if we can collect some leather, collect some raw beef, that quest will be done. It gives us two mutating frames, which I've also uh, I've already crafted some of them. Uh, I will show you that, guys, soon. And uh, it gives us another Oblivion frame, which is always really, really useful. If you're playing this pack not in the easy mode, go down that route as soon as you can. Get that Oblivion frame, because it's going to help you out massively. One thing that we do have, and I will uh, explain how we got the Vial of Pheromones, if this doesn't actually do. Uh, yeah, it actually does. Um... So I'll explain how we did this one. So the smelting bee is a fantastic alternative to using a furnace, and you don't even need to give it fuel. That is fantastic, guys. Simply place any item you wish to smelt onto a nearby flower pedestal, and it will smelt the item. You can automate this with a simple hopper setup. Speaking of automation, you may be wondering how to make certain that only one type of bee uses a flower pedestal. This can be achieved with a pheromone frame. Place it in the hive of a career bee and you will obtain its pheromones. Then right click on a flower pedestal and only that bee will work with that pedestal. That comes, uh, that comes in useful when we get to the crusher bee a little bit later on. To obtain a smelter bee, you must breed graduate and modest bee with a furnace under the hive. We've done that. It's all done and dusted. Obtain the pheromones of a smelter bee to complete this quest. We've done that. We get a flower pedestal, two hoppers, and an anvil. So we're definitely going to go ahead and claim that. Because that is what we're going to be working on this episode, guys. This flower pedestal and these hoppers are going to make our lives just a little bit easier when it comes to crafting ourselves up some charcoal. We don't need to keep any charcoal spare to be able to make more charcoal. We just need the bee to do its business. But first and foremost, let's keep going through this quest book. Like clockwork, we've done this one as well. By now, you'll be finding out that a few things are running out of power. Definitely. The Clockwork B can be re can really help out with this, and it certainly can, guys. Obtaining the Clockwork B is a little bit of work. You'll have to breed a graduate B with a student to obtain a PhD B. Now, very early on in the series, we already had some sort of hybrids of PhD Bs and common or something like that. So I just used them to sort of thin out the uh, the line there, and we got a pure one out of that. Then we need to breed the PhD bee with a noble bee to get an engineer bee, which we've got. You can see the pure over there. Finally, cross the engineer bee with a smelter bee, and you get the clockwork bee, which we've got. Clockwork bees will automatically wind up any clockwork engines in their territory, producing RF for you, and can be a good source of early power. Oh, guys, this is absolutely amazing. Look at this, though. We get an LV capacitor. We get LV wire connectors. We get LV wire relays, LV wire core, an engineer's hammer, and six clockwork engines. I'm claiming this right now, guys, because this is going to be huge for us. This is going to allow us to get rid of the generators that we've got up here and just use our clockwork bees that we've got over there to be able to go ahead and get everything powered. It's not going to be a fantastic source of power, but it is a good early game source of power. Get that centrifuge going, we can get all the honey that we want. Get this, we can get all the apiaries that we want. Get the squeezer in there, we can get some more seed oil. And so on and so forth, guys. That is what we're going to be working on uh, this episode. Obviously, because we've got a lot of red question marks, uh, not question marks, exclamation marks. I know my uh, my punctuation, guys. So let me go ahead and sort them out. And then we're going to work on what we're going to work on this episode, which is, of course, working through that clockwork bee. Um, the one thing, the reason why I wanted to get through to the clockwork bee is there is something called an energy bee. Now, this is absolutely ridiculous, guys, and something I really, really want to get to. Now, the energy bee will actually produce... Um, like, uh, I think it will power up things that are next to it with RF. So, like the clockwork engine, however, the energy bee will do it for you. I could be completely wrong in that, and I'll de definitely double check that, but I'm pretty sure uh, that it does something with energy, and we'll certainly want to get to this. So, let me go ahead and sort out all these exclamation marks, make sure that the bees are continuously making us these combs, because that's what's getting us the resources, and um, I will be back. Okay, guys, I am back. I've sorted out all my bees over there, so they're nicely working. So, over here, I've got the um, the wood, and this is the basically where the part, I come over, I whack a load of wood, I get a load of wood, I want that changing into actual physical power. Um, obviously, that would be 
to change it into charcoal. So to save myself the issues and the problems of what we're going to face here, I'm actually going to want a few things and that is more wood. So let me really quickly chop down this tree. Nice. Always love it when a tree just completely overgrows like that and I've got vein miner to be able to sort it out. So look at the amount of wood I now have. That is absolutely fantastic. Right, let me plant that back down. Put all the rest of them into here. So, um, I want it somewhere around here. It doesn't have to be exactly near these. Of course, we need to give it plants as well. So that's the uh, one of the issues that we have. Plants are over here. Um, whoops. Plants are indeed over here. Hmm. In fact, I probably... I do want the wood somewhere. I want it somewhere near here. So I think I'm going to plant it right here. Okay, and uh, inside this is we're going to move our smelter bo uh, our smelter bees. Where are they? There they are. So I'm going to take that out of there. The uh, thing is going crazy inside there. It's fine. We'll go ahead and put our smelter bees here. So smelter pure. Okay, we'll stick them into here. So these guys will find the flowers and they'll do their business. So what I've got now got to do is take my pheromones. I've actually put them in here. These are one of the ones that you can see that I've got them uh, in here like this. So we will take our... Yeah, we don't need the pheromone for him. However, these smelter queens, these smelter drones, they're going to be what give us the stuff. So the flower pedestal. I don't know if that needs to be planted on dirt specifically. It probably does because it's a flower. Let me just go and put it down, see if it'll actually just pop. No, no, it'll go down the floor, uh, so that's fantastic. Um, it will use, naturally, whatever this is, it will use nearby bees. And that is one of them right there. But to save us the tr issue and the trouble that we'll ha be having here, um, we need to create ourselves a chest like this. Um, in fact, let me just give myself some more planks because we're going to want a chest with these to be able to create ourselves a basic draw. Um, so there's a smelter piece. I'm probably going to want to put the basic draw... Uh, which way do I want to face it? I'll face it this way. So our hopper is going to go into there. Into there. Our flower pedestal is going to go onto the uh, on top of the hopper there. And we're going to want um, this into there like this. Okay, now the smelter bees, pheromones, we're going to stick onto the flower. So only the smelter bees will use the flower pedestal right there. Now, what we should see if we put that there is wood going into here. Eventually, this will change, get smelted, and there we go, guys. Look at that. It will get smelted into coal, uh, into charcoal, should I say. It takes some time. You know, it's not perfect. Uh, we've got two charcoal. It must be taking it straight as soon as it's done. It must be taking it straight out and putting it into here because I haven't seen it do anything different. So our ch charcoal currently is at two, <laughs> three. There we go. It's not fast. However, it's automated and that is the point. We could get a few of these like flower pedestals. How, what do they cost to make? These things. Um, any sort of flower with three sticks. So that's actually really, really easy to do. As long as you've got an ability to pick the flower up. We don't have that currently. But the smelter bee is there. It's doing the business. And uh, I like that fact. Now, I do believe if you put, you can put a, a number of things around it. And it really only depends on one of these guys. Whoops. It's, uh, it's night time. Let's go to sleep really quickly. So I am really happy. I'm really happy, guys. What was that achievement for, anyway? Craft an engineer's hammer. Well, I haven't crafted it. It just got put into my inventory. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So that guy will now use all of this wood and change it into charcoal. So I could just go ahead, sit here for ages, and, uh, and get a load of wood, and then do that. And it wouldn't be a bad idea. However, we've got over here these bees. Now, these desperately need some form of 
upgrading speed. Um, it needs all of these frames constantly being put in because we're just not we're not creating enough tree bark to be able to make this a viable source of uh, of, of tree farm. It, it's just not. It, me sat there is actually easier and uh, and better than this current system is. We'll be getting into that at some point. I don't know when, but we will be getting into that. We've also got a sugar cane farm now, guys, as you can probably see. That is a good plus. Because that means we uh, will be able to get paper, which is used in the pheromone frames. So now we've got this done, uh, and we're creating charcoal, which is great. Good source of power. But if we were to use these clockwork engines, um, which we're going to do, we're actually going to move these. And I'm going to try this out, guys. I don't know if this will massively work amazingly well. We'll, we'll, try, and, we'll try it, though, that's for sure. And we're going to move all of this stuff. We're just going to move it. Don't worry about the uh, the charcoal and also these generators. Um, we're more bothered about these things. So I'm actually going to probably want the stuff that it's on as well. I want these to be able to... Uh, Give it like a smooth look onto the floor. Nice. Nice one. Over here. This is, these are where our bees are. And the clockwork bees are actually here. The clockwork pewers. So, I'm actually going to want a little bit more in the way of planks. There we go. Plenty of them. Because I extended the, uh, the area out over this side. So I made a load more planks. Also did that in between episodes. We can make this area over here a little bit of a place so that we can put our machines. It's not a bad idea. It's not terrible. Uh, it's not the best idea in the world. But it's not a bad idea either. And we certainly want to be going ahead and doing this and putting somewhere for our uh, things to be. So if I was to do this, uh, for example, I want to see uh, just how much I can put onto one hive. So these are the clockwork bees. I'm going to put our three machines over on this side. It's definitely within range of that, so I'm not too bothered about where that is. The squeezer is going to go on there. The centrifuge is going to go on there. And the carpenter is certainly going to go on there. We're probably going to want a little bit more space along the back here as well. So we're going to extend this out by another couple. For no particular reason, other than, other than uh, I don't want to go flying off this uh, this thing. Lovely. On the back of here, then, we've got six clockwork engines, which I'm going to place all here. As you can see, this is wonderful. Two of them are working, one of them isn't. So I'm wondering, it surely cannot be the range of which it's at. We'll try it. We'll, let, we'll try the fact of, is it the range or is it just... Uh, it will only work with two clockwork engines, because that one's not even running at this moment in time. That's because it's full of power. That's probably why it's running. Um, so, we're going to move the squeezer there, and we're going to put the clockwork engine there. Is it a range thing, or will it only do one hive per two engines? And it looks as if, by the looks of things, that it's only one hive per two engines, guys. So... That's not the best thing in the world. Um, that's not the best thing in the world. However, I have an idea. Let me take these engines. We're going to go ahead and... I don't know if it works like this. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But let me just try this. So... Oh, we've still got power in that. That's probably why they don't stack either then. That's the carpenter, isn't it? This is a centrifuge. We've got a lot of stuff that we can actually put there uh, into the centrifuge to be able to drain some of the power of this out. If it doesn't work like this, we've certainly got the alternative, and that is to use the uh, the um, blah, 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 this stuff from Immersive Engineering. We can use that. But I want to try this first. Where's my combs? I've got some here. Uh, I've got quite a lot of rocky combs. Enough to surely put into the uh, centrifuge over here so that we can get a load of stuff. So let's put that into there. That's going to go ahead and uh, use the power from this. I want this completely drained before I try this out. I'm wondering if the clockwork engine will actually generate power in the generator. I'm pretty sure it won't. 
But if not, we've got the LV capacitor then we can use these wire relays and connectors and wires to be able to do the job for us. Let's just really quickly go ahead and sort these out. That's got nothing in, so that's fine. Oh my god. It, when you see a sea of exclamation marks, it's just like, ugh. I really can't wait until I can automate this. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. So look at this. We're getting a load of stones, different stone coming in. That's fantastic. Right, we can see now that's not actually pointing the right way. It makes me think that it doesn't actually do that. Can I do this? No, it just points straight towards me. It's not pointing into this. Okay. What we can, however, do is we can put our LV capacitor down, which I am going to do. I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to pick this up. And then what we are going to do is plant around it that. I'm going to put that in the back. And, ah, oh, the thing is it will only power two, won't it? That's the problem. So even if I put that there, I don't think it's going to do anything. It looks like it is, but um, we'll soon find out. We will soon find out. So we need a relay to pop onto the top there. We need actual wire connectors to pop onto... Yeah, let's go for the backs. Let's keep it nice and, uh, nice and sorted. I'm not going to fall off here, am I? No. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And I'm wondering if that will actually work, if the power gets taken out by that. I've got 4,000 stored there, I've got nothing stored in there, so it's just not storing it. Okay, pickaxe. Lovely. Um, it looks as if I'm going to have to put the wire connector onto there. It's just not, there's nothing powering this. Like, it, it's not, it's got, it's... Oh, I know why, and that's because I haven't actually, um, where's my engineer's hammer? There it is. We need to change the side of this to inputs, obviously. So there we go. And that's an input as well. I don't know. If... That one's on green? It's creating a bit of power, though, to be honest. I'm quite happy about that. It said it would power all clockwork engines in its range up to yellow. This one's only on green. So, what we're going to do here, it's going to be a little bit cheeky. We're going to put that there. We're going to put the relay there. Not wire connectors. We're going to put this there to there. The wire is obstructed. God damn it. All this time. All this time the wire is obstructed. Let's move this slightly to one side. Um, in fact, I've got a better idea. I've got a better idea. Let's just use that. I think that is that a full block. I think it is. That means that's a half block on there, which I'm quite happy about. It means I can stick to the underside of this, but nothing's going to spawn on the top of it. And then we are going to put that to that, and then that to that, and that to that. So now both of our machines are getting powered. That one's really not getting powered. So we might as well get rid of this, because it's just not doing anything. Um, so one hive can do two engines. That's good to know. And something to keep in mind. The two engines can create... I don't know how much power it can create. But we're creating more than we're actually using. With just the centrifuge running. No? No power. Is that not working? Does it not work like that? I thought that would. Oh, that's because I haven't actually output it. There we go. <laughs> so... Uh, it's going out more than it's coming in, but I think that's because it's filling the internal buffer of the other machine up. So we'll wait until that happens. Ow. Don't go into the way of uh, of them, guys, because it, it will just hurt. Right, that's full. And it's still actually... This is with one single machine running. It's still not good enough. 
<laughs> it's not giving enough power into it with these two clockwork engines here. So we've got we've got some options now. With the clockwork viewers, we can leave these going, of course, um, and it's certainly not going to help when it gets to night time, so let's go to sleep. We can leave these going and then hope eventually we'll go and, and create another clockwork princess. We can breed another clockwork princess if we so wish, but I'm not going to do that because we're not going to be using the centrifuge that often to be able to do with anything like that. But what I eventually want to do, guys, is um, have a system of all of these, like the electrical ones going. This is certainly not going to be, uh, not going to cut it, guys. It's certainly not going to cut it. We've got a load more energy going out than what we have uh, coming in. So, maximum input. It's just the same you can't throttle the input, but there you go. What can you do, guys? What can you do? The anvil, by the way, is actually used for a quest. Um, this one, armor up. So armor bees will buff armor items placed on a pedestal near them to have increased armor values. Like smelter bees, you can use pheromones to make sure only the target, uh, only they target a pedestal, so you don't accidentally smelt your armor. You must breed this bee using two graduates and an anvil under the hive. Please don't be like Jeff. Jeff forgot that anvils fall when placed over the void. Jeff had to kill a lot of zombies to get another anvil. Um, we're not going to be like Jeff, of course. Jeff was silly. We're certainly not going to be like Jeff. This is still rattling through, actually. I say rattling through. It's at 13 charcoal. Have these stopped? Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that, guys. They've stopped. We need to make double sure that these guys are uh, covered with student bees. So let's pop one into there because we need one to do that. So we're going to shift right click on this hive. So now that's being watched. We're going to shift right click on these two hives so that these are being watched as well. There we go. Lovely. That one actually needs changing over. Decent. And of course the clockwork. These are all doing these hives, which is uh, which is good. There we go, guys. I think we've made a really good start to uh, creating some power. It's not the best start in the world. We'll have to get some more clockwork uh, bees on the go before we can really make this uh, really make this a thing. Um, we've now got the ability to get free power basically with the uh, with the generator. We could add to this actually over here, guys. Let me just go ahead and slap ourselves the generator down there, and what we will do. I'm hoping this will work. Is we're going to put the wire connectors onto here. We're going to connect these wire connectors to the relay, of course, so that any power they do create, I'm hoping, will go into there. And it will actually take it away from this, so that this can create power. There we go. It's creating power rather than losing power. And we are doing combs just non-stop now, which is great. Okay, so we've got a good start there, guys. We've got a really, really good start to the automation side of things. And there is so much within these career bees that, honestly, guys, it's a good idea, I think, to go down this route before we go down this route. We've got a problem. Um, with the metallic bees, so we look at it. With the metallic bees, I was looking through. We need the obsidian bee, of course. Um, and we need a fiendish bee. To get a fiendish bee, we need the sinister bee. To get a sinister bee, um, it does. It, we can get it to run. We can get it to go, but it needs flowers. The flowers it requires, guys, are nether wart. We got this from the shop. We've got nowhere to plant them. We've got no way of getting soul sand other than to do a ton more bee breeding. If we take a look at soul sand, you can get it uh, from the uh, centrifuge. Or should I say... Right, soul sand. There we go. You can make it um, with uh, dirt, sand, which we've got access to both of them now, and this soulful wax right here. So we can make it, but soulful wax is not easy to come by. It, you need soul combs from magic bees. And for magic bees, of course, you can get the spirit, soul, sol, uh, som, 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 whatever the hell that. Sol. Do you know when someone's solemn? Is that's not it? 
It's the other one. But uh, Dreaming, you can get them from them ones. These are not easy to get to, guys. You need Ethereal Bees. To get them, you need Supernatural and Arcade. There is a whole host of different bees that we need to go down before we can even get to Soul Sand. And that's disappointing. I was hoping to see in the quest book here, maybe in bee shopping somewhere around here, an ability to buy one piece of Soul Sand. That would help this uh, this series it really really would help this series guys but there's nothing that i can see anywhere that gives us access and gives us um one of these soul sands it just doesn't it just doesn't we need to buy these hives as well and they're not cheap when it comes to dripping combs guys they really are not cheap we need one of them we need one of them we need one of these and i think that's it for the magic ma uh, the magical hives so we need 30 32 48 we need 48 dripping combs which we just don't have at this moment in time that's going to take time um a touch of magic so to get we can do this we can go down the otherworldly combs and i'm hoping somewhere maybe in one of these that's locked at this current moment in time soul sand I'm hoping there's something in there that will allow us to be able to do this. So the otherworldly combs. Let's take a quick look. What else? I spell it right. Otherworldly combs comes from the base bees for magical bees. Okay, you get the 18% chance, 20% chance. Um, I think charmed, enchanted, and ethereal might be. No. Ethereal, arcane, and supernatural. So charmed and enchanted bees. Oh, we can actually make these. No, we can't. It's eldritch. Eldritch bees comes from mystical bees. They're the ones. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see as we're going along. But that's going to be all for the end of this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it, guys. I'm certainly going to go ahead and uh, sort out all my drones once again. But I like the progress we've made here. I really like the progress we've made, guys, by getting power. Because that is one of the biggest things here. A stockpile of power. And we're getting the ability here just to automatically deal with our wood into charcoal. we got 30 charcoal in there without me doing anything. I don't have to uh, look at this. Um, I just have to cut down the wood, put the wood in there. And I'm done. I don't even have to keep any charcoal. I can use all that charcoal if I really wanted to, guys. So I'm liking the stage of which we are at. With the quest book, what we're going to be doing for next episode is just to continue on down this career bees route. In between episodes, I will go ahead and get myself the armor of bee. And then we're looking at these. Now, I've actually got that one already. That's the Yente bee. Um, it's over there. It's in there. We've just got to get the other stuff so we can see what sort of... Uh, um, what sort of reward we get from getting the uh, the, the NTB. Um, I've actually forgotten what the NTB does. Let me give a quick gander because I do remember it being really, really useful. NTB. Here we go. I'm just using my phone, guys. I'm not actually on my computer at this moment in time. But I'm pretty sure it was a really, really good B to get. So it should be in the special notes bit. Shift right clicking with the Entei Princess on any apiary will cause it to disappear and it will automate the apiary. Here you go. This is fantastic. It will try to find the best princess drone combination leaning towards producing purebred bees. Destroying the apiary will give the princess back. That, guys, has to be one of the most useful bees I am going to get for this point in time. Look at the state of this. In fact, let's do this on camera. We should have a couple of Yente bees. We do. I'm going to take four. That leaves us the other ones. So first and foremost, we of course want to go ahead and shift, right click, onto there. I don't think it worked. Is that because the student bees are already in there? Possibly. Let's go and try it on just the forest bee over here, because that's a nightmare to do as well. No, it's not. So let me just go ahead. And pick the apiary up. It should drop the uh, the student one. Yep, there, there's, there's the student one, guys. There's the student drone. Right, let's pop that into there. Forest, forest drones. Um, so we've got that one. So if we shift right click, oh, it's still not doing it. I wonder why. Is it a princess that needs to be put into here? 
Is it a princess? This is the question. Oh, Yente, princess on any apiary. Oh, my goodness gracious me. That's going to take forever. Well, for the moment, guys, that's going to go in there and tell me what's going on. <laughs> the Yente drones will have to wait for another day. Maybe I can... The good thing to do, and one thing I do like, if we take a quick look, and I promise you guys I'm not going to be too much longer now, but if you take a look at what to use the Yente princess with, it really doesn't combine with anything else. So, if we had... Wait, what did it actually combine with? Graduate. So we don't want to put it with a graduate princess. But if we took it with a cultivated princess, for instance, we took the Yente drone and we brought it over to this apiary over here. We don't need these mutating frames. I actually bought them, uh, and I told you I was going to tell you. I bought them from the bee shopping up here. It's got a three, uh, times three on the mutation rate, and it really does help. So it's like nearly double. No, hang on a minute. Yeah, it's nearly double the amount of what you would get normally from uh, from the other um, frame that we do use. So I'm going to put the princess in here. And I'm going to use one of the Yente drones. And because they don't actually combine with each other to make another thing, um, they're really useful with combining with other princesses to make that princess into a Yente princess. And my goodness, can we use these. Woo, can we use these guys? So in between episodes, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be getting a load of Yente princesses, getting my apiaries automated, because it is a pain. It really is a pain having to do that over and over and over and over again. So I'm, I'm going to do that, guys. Uh, have you noticed they're, they're all like that? And they will be, because that's because they're 50-50 at the moment, and they're really not. I can do this. I can do this. We've got plenty of Yente drones that I can go ahead and force that to be a Yente princess. So I'm going to do that off camera anyway, guys. Until next time, I've been the Softman. As always, stay safe.